All right, here we go. Let's get right to him. Tyler Booker standing by. We got a thousand questions. I hope he has 1,000 answers for us. <laughs> he normally does. He's with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Tyler Booker joins us each week, courtesy of Crane Works. The big guy says, look to the big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. What is up, Tyler? How are you today? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic. Uh, let's start with a question a lot of people have about you. I know you missed the game because of back spasms. How are you feeling? Is the health okay? Yes, sir. A lot better. I just wanted to, um, yeah, the the training staff thought it would be best I sit out this game and, you know, really heal up rather than going in the game and possibly making it worse. And then we also, as a as a team, have a lot of um, confidence in Terrence Ferguson. And he played a great game. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, it's good. I'm glad to hear you're doing better. I know a lot of people were concerned about you. Obviously, the game did not go the way any of you would have wanted. How hard is it not playing in a game and then watching it maybe not go as you had hoped? It's got to be more difficult than actually playing in the game and it not going the way you hoped. Yeah, it's really difficult because, you know, as, as a competitor that I am, I feel like if I was in the game, I I would um, the result would be different. But there, there's I had to control what I can control, and all I could control in that moment is just continuing to be a leader, tell the offensive line what I saw, tell them what um, – some tips that can help them, you know, and I, I feel like I did everything I can on on that aspect of it. But everybody everybody played a really solid game. For you know, a win is not just a win for Alabama fans. Uh, they like winning, and they like winning uh, with a little flash, a little sizzle. Only three first-half points for you guys. Uh, you do come out of Tampa with a win as you head into SEC play, but were there any ass chewings, whether it was from coaches <laughs> or internally with players? Because I said it earlier, Tyler, I personally, and I know it's easy for us to sit back on the couch drinking a beer watching you guys, but I personally said earlier that I, I think there needs to be a come to Jesus moment where, hey, we got to get our shit together. Yeah. And I feel like we, um, yeah, we, we had a players only meeting yesterday and we, we pretty much had that. Everybody got a lot of stuff off their chest, and I feel like we're all on the same page now. You know what I mean? It's unfortunate that it took a loss at, at Bryant Denny in a in a subpar game in Tampa for that to happen. But I feel like we're all on the same page now, and I'm actually excited to see how the rest of the season goes since we're all on the same page. All right, so so tell me about um, you know obviously players only meeting. You don't tell me what goes on behind there, but just tell me where this team is as far as united. Uh, was there any fractions this week and in a, in a tough road game? And do you feel like those are healed back up if there was any? I wouldn't say there were any fractions. I just feel like we just need to put an emphasis on togetherness. I'm not saying that we weren't together, but we're just emphasizing it now. It's emphasizing it more now, you know. We, that, was a, that was pretty much the emphasis of the whole meeting, just coming together, supporting each other. Not saying that we weren't doing that before, but we're just putting it – on on the forefront of everything because if we all do our job as a unit as as an offensive line if we do our job as the running backs do their job as the defensive backs do their job their wide receiver job do their job there's really nobody that can, that can stop us you know where we just have, all have to execute at the same time when we're supposed to how did how did the team handle um the the change and the the reps uh that the quarterbacks were getting because obviously that's such a high profile position uh, how, how did how did the entire roster, how did the locker room react to that? Uh, we handled it pretty well. I mean, there's nothing that we can do about it. It's not it's not up to us. The only thing that we can do as it, as the as teammates of the quarterbacks, whoever it is, whoever it could be on any given drive, is to put them in the best position to succeed. Because all three of those guys, they they worked their butts off fall camp all summer, so they all deserve to play. You know, and we're just excited to see all of them get a chance to showcase their talent. Alabama's Tyler Booker is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's presented each week by Crane Works, the big guy. says check out the big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. Um, sometimes, though, in a game when you play poorly, you go back and watch film and you realize you were closer than you thought. I know you did not play, but you were in the film mm -hmm. studies. I mean, did the film did the film look better than the game did? I mean, was 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 the game a little bit of a liar and the film looked better, or did or did you look at the film and say, yeah, that's just how bad we were? I'd say it's a bit of both. It's like, yeah, that's how bad we were. But at the same time, we were on a lot of the plays that were TFLs or sacks. We were we were like one second away from having a bomb. We were one block away from breaking off a big run, you know. But that's we we don't we don't live in the world of ifs. We live in the world of what happened, and what what will happen, you know. So we just got to execute. It, when you guys were watching South Florida film, did you see anything from number zero, Daquan Evans, 
Because I the guy had never had a career sack, and he had three on Saturday. Yeah, I feel like that was re- just really a scheme thing. You know, we they, we know that they brought a lot of pressure. Their, their defensive coordinator was at um, FAU last year, so we are watching a lot of their film. But um, that pressure was bringing him off the edge. That was something that we hadn't seen a lot. But regardless, we still have to be ready for it. You know, we have to be ready for the – blitz cars that we don't get during practice and that's just that's what it's about that's what being a great offensive line is about being able to improvise and adjust on the fly that's something that we definitely have to get better with but i feel like our our chemistry as offensive line is still is still there we still have great chemistry we still have a great mindset we just have to put it all together you know and that's what we're working towards but that, like i said last week it's a long season you know and we're going to get better week by week and that's the goal all right so here we week go by week, day by day here, here we go. Ole Miss comes to town this Saturday, Brian Denny Stadium. Um, on paper, there's a defensive coordinator, uh, Pete Golding. You familiar with that guy <laughs> on Ole Miss? The name, you ever talked? Name to, rings a bell. Yeah. You ever you <laughs> ever talked any smack to that guy in a practice before? Uh, what's it like going against a guy you know so well? Uh, you, you've you've played against his schemes many many times. Yeah, Coach Golding's a great defensive coordinator. You know, he throws. A, I remember last year during fall camp, he threw a lot of stuff at us. He knows how to um use mat- matchups really well. So we're very excited to go against him. We're really excited for the channel that he presents and um, looking forward to the game this weekend. You did, it seemed like at least, from the naked eye, uh, run the football better in the traditional run game. Obviously, Jalen Milrow gets a lot of rush yards when he's in there, but he did not play. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed as though the run game worked a little bit better, especially when when your team needed, you know, the four-minute offense there at the end. Um, did, did did it feel like you guys maybe had a little bit better run attack this week against South Florida that can move forward against Ole Miss? For sure, and that's the thing. Once we get in our rhythm, we I feel like it's really hard to stop us, but that's the thing. We have to get in our rhythm, and we have to put ourselves in a position as an offensive line to open up open up the run. Like, we have to pass protect better so we can, we can have them lighten up the box. Like, oh, my gosh, like, these guys can pass the ball too. But if we don't allow enough time for our quarterback to throw the ball, they can just load up the box. You know, so we just have to get better at pass protection so we can get to our extensive run game. So when you got back to Tuscaloosa Saturday night, did you just relax, maybe watch Colorado, Colorado State? Or is that one of those you, you want to get out and get away from football? It's one of those I want to get out and get away from football, you know, especially since I, especially since I didn't play. You know, I just I watched the film. Um, um, I got together with a few of, my, with a few of, the, um, few of the guys. We just hung out for a little bit, but it was one of those things we wanted to like get away from football. What what what's the worst when uh, one of us, somebody in the the so called media, ask you about your quarterbacks, <laughs> or if you're out at a bar and a couple of students come up and like, hey man, you guys need to be playing Jalen. Does that drive you nuts? Uh, yeah, I don't go to the bar, but whenever <laughs> Pro- probably <laughs> smart. Whenever, I don't think he's twenty one. Whenever yeah, we're out to eat, yeah, yeah. That, was, that, that was the setup. <laughs> we were out to eat. It really was. We had eighteen and up when I was down there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey uh, I, I'm glad to see you smiling because I had a question at the end. I was gonna because we were all so serious. I wanted to see. Well, that. I got a serious question. You want to hold the non-serious? Yeah, go ahead. I'll save the non-serious one. One more serious. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, I got. I, I, because I do want to ask this. Listen, you know Alabama fans are passionate fans, Tyler. You get that. That's one. I'm sure it's one reason you came to Alabama because people care. They care about a good product and. I, I'm, you know this, and I'm going to be honest with you, there are a lot of Alabama fans that are panicked right now. What would you tell the Alabama fans that are panicked that this this season is not going to go the way they anticipated it going? Trust the process. It's the same, that, same thing that we have to do on a day-to-day basis. Trust trust the process, trust in us getting better week by week and just um, continue to support us, you know? Like, we're, we're, we'll show up for y'all. Y'all continue to show up for us. Yeah. Okay. Now I leave it on him, Forrester, because I want to see his reaction to this. Um, if I'm right, you're from Philadelphia, right, or New Jersey? Is is that where you're from? You're you're not. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you keep that pinned at the top that you're you're from New Haven, Connecticut. What's what's the story behind there? Where's the Philly Jersey stuff come from? So I um I'm, I'm like I said, I'm born and raised in New Haven, Connecticut, but I spent my freshman year of high school at Birkin Catholic in New Jersey. And then for the rest of high school, I went to IMG Academy in Florida. So I really um been I've been gone from Connecticut for a long time, but um, I, I wear Connecticut on my sleeve. You know that's my that's my pride and joy. So um, I remember when I when I had like two four seven reports written on me, they would be like, oh New Jersey native, Philadelphia native, 
Um, <laughs> Bradenton native, like no, from New Haven, Connecticut. So I'd leave that pin just to let everybody know. Well, hey, uh, in in fairness to those recruit, recruiting services, not a lot of you know big time five star guys come out of Connecticut, right? You guys aren't known for in the state of Connecticut for big five star guys, are you? Yeah, we're not we're not known for them, but they're on the rise. I, I was a five star from Connecticut. We got Ellis Robinson, top top recruit in the country for twenty twenty four. He's from New Haven, Connecticut. There's a few guys that came before us, Tariq Black. He went to Michigan and then transferred to Florida. Um, Dwight Freeney's from Connecticut. There, there, there's a few. There's a yeah, few, but yeah. that's the thing. And when I when I get done playing in the in the very far future, I want to go back to net, go back to Connecticut and really build up the football program there so we can have a lot more five stars come out of there. Okay, so not a basketball state then. That's I mean <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever play a snow game? I have played a snow game. I have. And like, it's, it's very fun. Not at IMG. I not at IMG. No. You didn't. I guess that was when you were a freshman in, in uh, the other school, right? Yeah, yeah. Freshman is, um, when I was at Bergen Catholic in yeah. New Jersey. Okay. All right, he is Tyler Booker with us every Monday, courtesy of uh, Crane Works and Rental Works. The big guy says check the big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works. Tyler, I'm glad your back's feeling better. Hopefully you can get back in the game Saturday. Good luck against Ole Miss. Thank you. I have a great week. See you. All right, buddy. Take care. Tyler Booker with us each week, courtesy of Crane Works and Rental Works. He appears, as all of our guests, on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline, the old infamous players-only meeting.